and Valadun, and welcome to the neighborhood of Katong. I'm with my friend Bibi Seed, and here she's doing one of my favorite activities, which is glass beading, and we used to call it Kasok Manek. We should get these glass slippers. And it's like a very intricate process. This house of hers is what my memory of a Peranakan house is. I mean, she has kabayas, it's also a shop. And she has this whole stash of beads still, which she's collected over the years. We are now at Se Seng, famous Tao Kwa Pao at Dunman Food Centre. You know, this dish is so sentimental. There was this corner coffee shop, East Coast and Ju Chet Road, which has this stall and cha kwe tiao. And all of us would go to this stall. And this is the iconic dish. So far so that when I wrote my cookbook, I tried to copy it. And it's got this amazing chilli. I think the secret is this combination of the bright vintage and all these bits and pieces. And that braised dark sauce. My version is a bit different. It's a stuffed bean curd with chicken rather than duck meat. I have prawn as well and water chestnut. And I think the chilli sauce is important. This is the Eurasian Community House and we're headed upstairs to the Eurasian Heritage Gallery. And I thought it's so important to know this as part of Katong because it's in a hidden corner, but it's a beautiful building and opposite used to live President Nathan and he was a great supporter. To me, Eurasian life is Eurasian food, but it's also dancing, weddings and suji cake, which I love. And then, you know, the song like Jingli Nona, Jingli Nona, Yokkare Kaza, that's a Eurasian song. This is called Eddie's Place because Eddie Barker was one of our first generation ministers and I think in recent history, the most prominent Eurasian in Singapore. Mr. Barker, like most Eurasians, enjoy socialising, having a party, having friends together and this place is in tribute to him. Well, in front of me is the famous curry devil and then this is the famous thing. This is a less well-known dish which is beautiful. It's a prawn bostado and this is Pachri, which is, I think, slightly Indian influence, which is a plant. This is a very Eurasian specialty, the suji cake, and we're having it for tea. Welcome to Kwe Guan Hot, the only place I go for genuine Hokkien popia skin since I was a child. It was a little shack here. And I'll introduce you to Michael, who's now the third generation. Hi. Hi. His father, his uncle, grandfather used to make and the grandfather was from Fukien province and this is the correct way to make popia skin. So I learned this when I'm like a small little kid. I used to stay in a shop house uh, yeah. upstairs yeah. and then the business is downstairs. Yeah. So like during uh, holidays and uh, weekends, I always run down and then see how my uncles and, and try do, yeah. are making them. And that's how I pick it up. I think it's amazing that Michael as a third generation is continuing this tradition because this is a skill, it's like people say Kung Fu, you know. You have a seafood you hand down through generations. And in our restaurants, we actually get the popia skin from Kuei Guan Huat for our popia set. I'm at Kim Chu Kuei Chang Babi, a place where I used to come as a teenager and in my 20s to get Nyonya Bachang and Hokkien Bachang as well. So I'm going to get some to bring home. I want one box of baby uh, Nyonya and one box of baby Hokkien. The secret to making a good Bachang is that you have to know what version you're making. If the Nyonya version is a pandan leaf and it adds a lovely fragrance. If it's a Hokkien version, it's a bamboo leaf. The leaves impart the flavour. Can we show them the baby chong? Yeah, this is what it looks like. So it's quite small because one is maybe too much for one person. Thank you for taking this tour of Katong with me. See you soon.